A lot of men don't take much interest in clothes. They'll wear anything, anytime, or the same thing all the time. But we're very protective when it comes to our pants. I myself wear suspenders and a belt. And this is not a fashion statement. It's more primal than that. We even keep our hands in our pockets for extra security. Don't know why. I mean, women will have a pajama party at one of them sorority houses, and they're happy to walk around in their underwear. At least, I think they are, according to all those teenage comedy films. But when men get together, they're just not comfortable unless they have their pants on. Don't know what it is. Maybe they're ashamed of their legs. A lot of guys won't even wear shorts. But wherever you go all over the world, you'll find men treasure their pants. Except in Scotland, but they have a lot of booze there. It's not smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. Winston Rothschild's here with some of that sewage humor that we all seem to enjoy so darn much. Bill's got a snake, which he's apparently willing to share. Ducky's going to show off his floss job. And I'm going to try to get into my pants more than one leg at a time. If Mother Nature ever had a father, this is the father to that mother. Please welcome my father's brother, my mother's brother-in-law, your friend but my uncle, Red Green! <laughs> Please welcome every father's nightmare, my little mother of a nephew, Harold. <laughs> well, we had a real wing ding up the lodge last night and surveying the damage this morning. We must have had a pretty good time. And a lot of the guys had hangovers, but old man Sedgwick had a little something extra to contend with. I can't believe he still drinks to excess. He should start acting his age. If old man Sedgwick acted his age, he'd be 10 years dead. <laughs> Anyway, he woke up, and he finds he's got a live badger in his pants. A badger? What do you mean, what do you mean like one of those little nasty, hairy, furry things with teeth? Yeah, not unlike old man Cedric himself. <laughs> Except for the teeth part. We figured the badger crawled in there to sleep. Uncle Red, badgers sleep in holes in the ground. How did one get in old man Cedric's bedroom? No, old man Cedric was sleeping in a hole in the ground. <laughs> He woke up, he started walking in towards the lodge, and he noticed a lump in his pants that was twitching and wiggling, and almost everybody guessed Badger. <laughs> now we gotta figure out a way to get it out there without startling him. Boy, that must be really frightening for him. Yeah, and the same goes for old man Sedgwick. You know, being isolated up here, I really miss television. I can't wait to see what's happening on Welcome Back, Cotter. Is Horshack married yet? I hope so. <laughs> All the twins can sleep on the table, and Aunt Helen can sleep in the chair. Uncle Toby just sucked down my beer so he can sleep right there anywhere. As far as I'm from, Joyce is camped out in the boathouse. Fritz has the kitchen floor. And that brand new little baby's looking kind of dangerous so he can sleep in the silverware drawer. Now my sisters can bunk in with mom. I'll sleep in an orange crate. Fred and John and Bruce and Lon. Al and Tom and Joe and Don can sleep in the car and asphyxiate. It's okay to rent a cottage in the sunshine down by the lake. But telling all your friends and relatives, believe me, is a big mistake. <laughs> well, you gotta know she's gonna go nuts when you tell her what you did. Absolutely, and I gotta take my hat off to you. I don't think you've ever done anything this stupid before. You know, she was scrimping and saving that money for a special occasion. Somehow, I don't think the occasion she had in mind was you loaning that money to your buddy so he could go and pay for a new cap and liner for his truck. And you're gonna have to tell her, and you're gonna have to tell her soon. Bank statement comes out every month. Do it. Do it quickly. Because this is not the moment for you to show you're the least bit scared or indecisive. Take her hands. Sit her down. Look her straight in the eye and... Lie. 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 <laughs> Biggest fib you oh. can wrap your lips around. <laughs> ah. Yeah. Well, that'll buy you a little bit of time, I guess. Yeah, well, of course, you know the truth right now would just cloud the issue. You gotta lie through your teeth. I would try something like 
close friends of ours, huh? I don't want to say their names, and they didn't even want me to know about I found out about it. And I just gave them the money just like, just, just the way you would, you know? But they, they made me promise not to tell you anything about it. <laughs> That's really good. And, and it has a, a sentimental twist, you yeah. know? If you say something like that, she's gonna think you are so sensitive. <laughs> But it'll only buy you time for a little bit of time, so you gotta move fast. Time for time, and time to go and tell your buddy, hey, call that loan back, get him to pay it back quick. That's right, and say you'll never, never, never do anything this stupid or selfish or underhanded again. Unless, of course, you can come up with an even better and bigger lie. <laughs> Welcome to Handyman Corner, where everything old is new again. You know, old man Cedric's badger problem has given me an idea for an inexpensive animal trap. All right, now, for starters, you're going to need one of these hoses here, which uh, they use to connect from the dryer to the outside vent, and you're going to need the outside vent. You're in luck, though. Both of these things are available in most home laundry rooms. I would suggest that you wait a few minutes after the last load and let the whole rig cool down, because these things do have a way of building up a certain amount of heat, especially if you're doing, say, a living room rug or your winter underwear in there on the heavy-duty cycle. <laughs> All right, now, the first thing you got to do is you got to cut the hose in half, which actually you can do by biting. <laughs> Uh, you may find that there's a wire in there, uh, so uh, I would suggest that to avoid being permanently flossed, you either use somebody else's teeth or maybe some snips of some kind. There we go. All right, now, uh, if you got one of these welcome mats out in front of your house, get that out of there before it does any more damage. And uh, you're going to roll that up because uh, that, in fact, is going to become the cage to hold the trapped animals. Kind of the way welcome mats are used at the homes of life insurance salesmen. <laughs> All right, now you take your uh, outside vent thing here, you want to hook that up to one of the halves of the dryer hose, and the way you can connect those is kind of interesting. They have these little plastic hose clamps. They're unbelievable things. They just slide one slide, a piece slides into the other. You pull that up like there, and by golly, that is solid. Hang on, then. You just wrap that around the hose. All right, let's open that up a little bit. <laughs> All right, I'm thinking maybe this is not the, the best way to, uh, to attach the, the whole unit together, so. No. I decided to use the handyman's secret weapon, duct tape. So there's our trap, pretty much built. But you can't just have it sitting out in the woods like that. You gotta be sneaky, like those guys from the tax department. So I decided to take a page out of old man Sedgwick's book, hide the whole trap, Inside a pair of pants. <laughs> there. Mm. And then there. There we go. There we go. There we go. Come on, man. Come on, little fella. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> and the animals aren't going to be suspicious because a, a pair of pants lying in the woods around Possum Lodge is a pretty common sight. There we go. However, they are going to need some sort of a culinary incentive to come up the pant leg. So I would suggest that you swipe an hors d'oeuvre tray from the next social function your wife drags you over to and uh, pick one of these units up and uh, separate the toothpick from the hors d'oeuvre itself. Then you take the pant leg, as I've done here, and you stick the hors d'oeuvre up inside and you push the toothpick down through, through the pant leg, through the hose, and into the hors d'oeuvre. You do one of those every few inches and the animal will work its way all the way up until you get to the danger area, which is the crotch of the pants, because that's where the welcome mat cage is. And you want to use men's pants on this, because uh, if you happen to catch an animal that you don't want, you can just unzip the fly, lift the welcome flap, and let the little guy go, like they did in that movie Free Willy. <laughs> so until next time, happy hunting, and remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Excuse me. <laughs> And speaking of traps, we're like the Von Trapp family here with Ranger Gord's got a badger trap and Bill's going to make himself a snake trap. Want to talk to you middle-aged guys out there. You heard any good radio stations lately? Stations that play good driving music? Well, there aren't any. <laughs> it's all yakety yak now. News, talk shows, rap music. Doesn't it make you wonder? What happened to our music? Where'd it go? Where did the music that defined our generation go? Well, I know where it went, and it's good news for a change. Our music is all sitting in the clearance bin down at the local hardware store. 
you could zip down there right now, pick up five, maybe six tapes for the price of one of them CD things. <laughs> and it's great music with words you can hear and understand. Words that tell a story without a video. <laughs> where women sing songs about men and men sing songs about women and surfing and hot rods. <laughs> now, I know it's depressing to see the music of your life stacked beside the discount shampoo and the two-for-one light bulbs. <laughs> but on the bright side, isn't it great when the truly awarding things in life are geared to a pensioner's income? <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> Well, that badger is still up old man Sedgwick's pant leg. Every time it twitches, the old fella gets tickled something fierce. Can't you get it out? Well, we tried here. Do you think we're just standing there laughing at him, not doing anything? Well, you were for the first hour. I know, but, but then he offered a reward for anybody who get the badger out of his pants without startling it so that it turns on him. So Junior Singleton threaded the boat hook up his pant leg there and kind of grabbed on and tried to pull it out, but all he got was old man Sedgwick's underwear. <laughs> Wrecked our best boat hook. Oh, oh, Uncle Red, oh, I got an idea. I would try to lure it out. <laughs> yeah, 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 we did that, Harold. Buster Hatfield caught a female badger, and he set that up just outside of the left pant leg of old man Sedgwick. The two of them started making sounds with each other, and all of a sudden, the female runs right up the right pant leg. <laughs> so now he's got like two badgers up his pants? Yes, and he isn't glad to see us. <laughs> well, this has got to end somehow. Well, we'll run out of animals eventually. <laughs> Winston Rothschild here of Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services, reminding you, if you can't bank on your tank, we'll take it from rank to swank. <laughs> We're up here at Fire Tower 13 with Ranger Guard, a man who's been looking out over the forest for a long, long time. 16 years on the job, Red. And not a single day off, not one sick day, not one vacation day, and not one thank you from anyone, anywhere, anytime. Ever. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Well then, Gord, on behalf of everyone, thank you for watching out over the forest. You're most welcome, man. Oh, all right, that's fine. Then. You're very welcome. Oh, that's fine, that's fine. No, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. That's, fine. that's, fine. that's, fine. that's nice. All right. <laughs> Okay, today, in honor of old man Sedgwick's pants, <laughs> I thought I'd talk about badgers. Now, I've got a badger over here that I've trapped last week. In fact, you might like to take a look at him. No kidding? Yep. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. Come on up, Harold. Now, a full-grown badger can grow up to two feet long. Oh, looks like he gave you the slip there, Gordon, huh? Hello. There he is, right there. I've named him Tiger. Uh, I don't think that's a badger. Yeah, though, don't, don't worry. He won't hurt you. No, no, no that's, I don't think that's a badger at all. Oh, look at him! Look at him! Look at him trying to escape! Look at him! <laughs> huh? Is that fun or what? Huh? <laughs> hey, you know, I was thinking of uh, starting a badger club, letting you guys join, and you can have all your conventions up here. Huh? Here we go. Here we go. There's what a badger looks like. A badger? Oh, yeah, that's a badger right there. Then I must have captured a... A wolverine! Stand back! This is dangerous. Get back, Harold! Get back! Potholes by me. Potholes, potholes everywhere, everywhere I go. In the ceiling up above and in the floor below. It seems that I see potholes everywhere I look. My wife sure takes it badly when you tell her she can't cook. Everybody relax. It's time for Adventures with Bill. <laughs> what the heck is he doing today? Oh my gosh, look at the size of that thing. Oh boy. Oh, no, it's not Bill. It's you just don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. Don't hurt Bill. Don't hurt don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. Don't hurt it. Well, maybe you'll get the long cut. Oh, I see. All right. This is one of these interesting uh, snake trap things that uh they're not as dangerous as they look. Uh, what he does is you got the board up against the stool there, and uh, then you got the little PCs trough, and you tie it. Now, what happens is the snake comes up the board, all right? And he goes up and he goes into the PCs trough, and uh, he crawls along in there. Once he gets past the rope, the, his own weight will tip the eaves trough, and the whole snake and the whole deal will fall down into the garbage can, and you can't get out of there, and you got him. Now, the trick is you got to put some kind of bait in there for the uh, for the snake, something to attract, because no snake would go into there. It is, there's your snake bait. 
uh, to get them to go in there. Now, to me, this looks like uh, a dozen large eggs, but then they can't charge 15 bucks for a dozen large eggs, can they? Make that 11, make that 10. Meanwhile, we didn't notice this, but uh, the snake is on his way up. So I guess that, I'll tell you, that snake bait works, doesn't it? If we're trying to get one out of there, we can put it into the pipe. Meanwhile, the snake's getting right up close to the stool there, and, uh, oh, 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 I think Bill's got one. There we go, there we go. Oh, oh, oh. And he pushes the rope off, and now we got the, oh, boy. We got the snake, I got the, I got the, I got the, I got the, I got the snake bait. Almost called it an egg, but Bill picked up the snake thinking it was the rope, and he tries to tie that on there. I don't know what kind of a knot you'd use with a snake. I never went that far in Boy Scouts, but I do know one thing. I wouldn't mess around, Bill, that's a snake. It's just Bill, snake, yeah, 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 yeah. No, thank you, no, don't want it, don't want it, don't want it. Where'd it go, where'd it go, where is it, where'd it go, where'd it go? Oh, there it is, there it is. Oh, it's safe, it's gone to a warm, dark place, Bill. Wow, look at that. Some interesting moves for a man his age. Here's something I've always wanted to do. Go for it, Brad. Stay tuned, Winston's coming up with his big hose, and Harold will be here doing what Harold does best. Things have gone from bad to worse with the Badgers in Old Man Sedgwick's pants. You mean they've started to? <laughs> Mate? <laughs> no, Harold, well, that's our fault. You know, when we sent that female up there, we thought the first one was a male. So now what we've got is two female Badgers in his pants having to knock him down, drag him out, fight, and Old Man Sedgwick is more or less caught in the middle. <laughs> oh, boy, Uncle Red, he must be going mental. <laughs> Well, okay, more mental. <laughs> well, he's not saying too much, but he is making the most unusual facial expressions I have ever seen. <laughs> and I've seen some Hummers, trust me. <laughs> anyway, at this point, old man Cedric is getting pretty upset. Wow, he must really be at the end of his rope. Well, the Badgers are at the end of his everything. <laughs> Here's a new joke I just made up. Knock, knock. Who's there? No one. No one who? No one. <laughs> just no one. Ever. <laughs> Welcome to the expert portion of the program. Claiming to be an expert this week with my Uncle Red is Mr. Dalton Humphrey. <laughs> Our first letter goes as follows. Uh, is from uh, Portland, Oregon. <laughs> All right. Dear experts, what would be an appropriate gift for my wife on our 25th anniversary? Well, I would recommend an Olympic medal for endurance. <laughs> it would have to be a silver medal. <laughs> because the 25th anniversary is silver. <laughs> Gold is actually 50, and then 60 is a diamond, and 100, I believe, is, is kryptonite. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd suggest a toaster. <laughs> a toaster, Mr. Humphrey? You'd celebrate like a quarter century of wedding bliss with a toaster? <laughs> well, I'm talking a four slicer. <laughs> You know, that, that seems a tad chintzy to me, Dalton. You know, I think this gift's got to be right up there with the wedding ring. You, you did get her a wedding ring, didn't you, Mr. Humphrey? No, I couldn't. No, no, uh, money was tied up in inventory. Yep, the, uh, buy a wee motel closed up, and, uh, I bought all their stoves, washers, dryers, and, uh, bar fridges. <laughs> so I, uh, I gave Anne-Marie a washer. Well, a washing machine is not a very romantic wedding gift. No, 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 a, a washer from a garden hose. <laughs> no, 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 I, I told her, I said, Anne-Marie, this is just an imitation uh, rubber uh, uh, washer. It's old and it's cracked, but for now, it's our wedding ring. And, and someday I'll get you a proper one when I'm successful. <laughs> so she's still waiting, huh? <laughs> You know what I mean, though, actually? Because um, you are such a success, you know, and, and the Humphrey Everything store is doing so well. Oh, yes, congrats, yes. Harold, I, I am a man of my word, Harold. And on our 20th anniversary, I got Anne-Marie a brand new washer. <laughs> Painted gold, everything. And what did she say to that? Well, nothing. 
No, it kind of surprised me, too. She just burst into tears and ran upstairs. Of course, women cry when they're happy. <laughs> she doesn't sound too happy to me about this rubber washer wedding ring thing. Oh, no, no, she was. The next day, she cleaned out her bank account and bought herself a brand new car to match it. <laughs> Then it was your turn to burst into tears. <laughs> well, men cry when they're happy, right? <laughs> We're here with entrepreneur Winston Rothschild to get his business advice for the small businessman. Now, Winston, what's the best way to get loyal customers? Oh, honesty, Rick. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Total honesty and complete sincerity. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you had me going there. That was a good one. <laughs> No, actually, what you want to do is you want to pick up one of them Help Yourself books. It's called um, How to Have More of Everything by Wally Himmler. And in there, you'll learn the secret, the Nietzsche philosophy. Oh, sure, Nietzsche, the German philosopher. Yeah, no, 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 Nietzsche. Like when you got a, a particular Nietzsche and you want to fill it. <laughs> no, no, that's niche marketing. N niche? Yeah. I thought it was Nietzsche. No. Oh, well, I guess next time I <clears throat> should get the audio tapes. No, what it means is you got to specialize, eh? You gotta add extra things to your service. You know, do things that no one out there's doing, you know. <laughs> I mean, if running a successful sewage sucking service was as simple as jumping down some dark, stinky hole with a hose, everybody'd be doing it, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah. One giant leap for mankind. <laughs> but for instance, I'm the only one in the area who offers extra services, eh? Like, for instance, did you know that I will remove dead animals from your drainage system free of charge? Wow. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't believe how many customers find that attractive, eh? <laughs> Golly, now, I'm just thinking here, uh, Winston. Have you ever removed a badger from a drainage system, say, from a pipe the size of a pant leg? Oh, that's nothing. Are you kidding? I once sucked a dead moose out of a chemical toilet. <laughs> Built my reputation on that one. Sort of sticks in people's minds, you know? I don't think so, yeah. I'm wondering maybe you could take a detour past old man Sedgwick's place. I think he might have a little job for you. Oh, no problem. You see? Now that's how I get my jobs, eh? I fill a niche. Now this is more of a Nietzsche. <laughs> well, we managed to get old man Sedgwick safely away from those badgers. He waited until they fell asleep and he just slipped the pants off. Well, how did he do that without disturbing them? While they were in there so long, old man Sedgwick lost a lot of weight. <laughs> he went from skin and bone to just bone. <laughs> Well, that's excellent, because now the badgers can assimilate themselves back into the woods and join the rest of the animal kingdom. Could take a while, Harold. The sight of old man says you've got no pants on pretty much cleared the area of wildlife. <laughs> well, of course, you know, Uncle Red, none of this would have happened if you were partying irresponsibly. Oh, oh meeting time, Uncle Red. Yeah, you go ahead. I'll be down in a little while, Harold. Okay. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting and after what happened to old man Sedgwick. I think maybe we should throw out some of my old bell-bottom pants. <laughs> I got a pair there that a rhino could get into. <laughs> hey, there's an idea. We'll give them to your sister. <laughs> and to the rest of you, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, thanks for watching. Keep your stick on the ice.